a big story that's catching everyone's eyes still. It remains Elon Musk versus Twitter. And in fact, here's the update over the last few days that we got following Elon's 43 billion dollar offer for the company. Twitter's board countered with a poison pill that would allow shareholders to take on discounted shares if he takes on more than 15 percent of the company. Again, if that happens. And the latest developments, Twitter adding dividends to the poison pill plan. As far as Elon himself, he tweeted an hour ago that he promises to slash the entire board's salary if he wins, which would be some cost saves, as he says there. But Akiko, this is the story that just keeps on giving here, and uh, you do wonder what's the ultimate outcome of this going to be? Well, there's so many different layers, and I feel like we were talking about this last week, about the questions, how this would be structured, how it would be financed, and yet here we are, uh, what, four days later still talking about it because there are still a lot of questions. You talked about the poison pill. Obviously, that was sort of expected. We saw that come down on Friday, but there's questions here about whether Elon Musk is going to go it alone. There's... We've seen Other reports singers. of potentially <laughs> yeah. somebody like Silver Lake, who, by the way, sits on the board. Also, maybe Elliott Management. Remember, we were talking about this last year when they took an activist position and that landed them a seat on the board at the time. So there's still a lot of questions on that front. And yet, in, you know, in the meantime, you have to wonder what's happening internally at Twitter, too, because... Well, you had Jack Dorsey, right, tweeting over the weekend, kind of taking a shot at his own board where he does have a seat. And, and you do wonder, is Jack maybe kind of in support of what Elon's trying to do here? But as you mentioned, everyone's phrasing this as uh, it's Elon Musk against Twitter, although it's not necessarily clear who's David and who's Goliath in this situation. But what we do know is that Elon doesn't necessarily have the firepower in the absence of selling his Tesla shares to pull this off. He's going to need some help if he wants to do this with a bank that's going to give him a loan to allow him some sort of leveraged buyout here. But look, at the end of the day, we have to remember that Twitter is taking some defensive actions here for those that don't understand kind of what a poison pill is. It allows existing shareholders to buy more shares at a discount. That discounted price would be $210 a share. Again, only if Elon takes on more than 15%. And a little fun fact, 210, what's that multiplied by two? It's 420. So... Maybe a little, Give it a little joke thought. in there. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Oh, he's going to find it's a way to funny. talk about. It's kind of funny. It's not that funny, but it's kind of right? funny. By the way, we should point out that um, Jack Dorsey, you were talking about him sort of talking about the board being a little critical. He did post a tweet that said it's consistently been the dysfunction of the company, talking specifically at uh, about the board there. So, um, you know, Tesla reporting earnings this week. That's going to be an interesting call, too, because oh gosh, we saw shares yeah. of Tesla move um, on the back of this, too, because to your point, if he is to finance this, he's going to have to part with his shares from Tesla. You know, that's not necessarily something Tesla shareholders would like to hear. No. And, and the other thing, too, is that, you know, for right now, again, it is not at all the case that Elon is going to sell any Tesla shares. And all this poison pill talk that people kind of forget about, again, none of these are being triggered. Twitter shareholders at the moment are not being offered anything more. What they're saying is that if Elon were to take on more than the stake he has now, which is 9.2%, if he gets past 15, that's going to allow Twitter shareholders to get in at that 210 exercise price and then get some more dividends as well. However, when I look at Twitter shares, right, after the announcement that Elon was making that 100% bid at, what was it, $42 billion uh, total, right, it came down. If people thought that Elon's bid was going to be credible, namely the Twitter shareholders, which could by proxy convince the board to actually go along with this, then the shares should have been meeting at the proposed price of 5420. Well, and the counter argument to that is that, you know, when you think about where tw uh, Twitter shares were trading last year, it was above $70 a share. So that sort of takes away that argument about Elon Musk is going to be going to be good for shareholders. It, it's just, to me, interesting to see how publicly this is all playing out <laughs> on Twitter, out of all platforms. Air, air, dirty and maybe, laundry. Out, yeah. maybe actually engagement's going to go up as a result of this, because people are just trying to figure out. And of course, Elon Musk you know, likes to air this publicly, too. Just every time a tweet comes out, I had, I had Twitter notifications turned on for Elon at one point. Had to turn that off. I mean, it's just... <laughs> What are we doing here? Yeah, it's sort of a, oh, okay, he said that. Okay, great, let's move on. <laughs> All right, let's talk more about Musk's potential Twitter takeover and what it means for the company. We've got Georgetown University professor of law, Urshka, Urshka Velikonya, and Yahoo Finance's Alexis Keenan. I apologize, it's completely butchered your name there, but let's start with where things stand right now. I mean, number one, how serious do you think this bid is? And what's your biggest question after what has played out over the last several days? 
So Elon Musk's bid seems completely unserious as opposed to actual serious tender offers. The, he, it's not actually a firm commitment to buy all shares of Twitter. It's just sort of a notice that I'm interested in buying uh, all of Twitter, but maybe I'll get financing, maybe I can't get financing. And there's very big serious question about Elon Musk being able to secure financing. Now he could pair up as, as, as you've been saying, he could pair up with Silver Lake or someone else to secure funding. But that would also mean he would have to share leadership of Twitter to some extent or get full support from whoever's providing funding, which seems very questionable at this point. And so this is perhaps a pastime for Elon Musk. It's fun. He got he's got nothing else to do. He loves Twitter, clearly, and he wishes Twitter were doing something else. So this is perhaps one his way of doing so. But just to give you a little bit of context, why this seems so unserious is he buys some shares. He talks about joining the board. What joins the board, then doesn't join the board, and then immediately launches a, uh, a essentially a, a hostile takeover offer. Hostile takeover offers typically develop over time as the potential bidder tries to negotiate with the board to acquire the company in a friendly manner, given that everyone understands the lay of the land, which is if a, if a hostile takeover is announced, tender offer is announced, there's going to be a poison pill put in place. So the bidder is going to mm -hmm. have to negotiate with the board anyway. And so the reason Musk just skipped over that step seems to me is that he wants the publicity. That's the ultimate objective here. <laughs> right. So, Professor, I mean, uh, you talk about the poison pill there. That was the latest development from Twitter, right? And the idea here is to dilute the equity stake that Elon would have if he wants to go above 15 percent. This is very reminiscent of the 1980s, right? A lot of those corporate raiders, people were wearing mullets at the time, jamming out to Olivia Newton-John. But what else we saw during that period of time were proxy fights, trying to replace the members of the board if you can't just simply take the whole thing at 100 percent. So is that the next step that you would expect out of the story? So he could have launched a proxy fight before doing a hostile takeover, right? Yes, you're right. Proxy fights are paired often, often with hostile bids, in particular if the board is resistant to the hostile bidders and treaties, then the way to get around it is to try to do a proxy fight. Do I expect that? Only if Elon Musk pairs with someone credible and someone who shares his vision. Um, otherwise, I... I think it's perhaps more likely that Elon Musk loses interest and goes away. But yes, a proxy fight is definitely a possibility in the cards because it is the one way to get around the poison pill defense without the board's cooperation, right? If the current board isn't working with you, you replace, it with, you replace them with a new board that will work with you. Professor, I want to understand exactly what Elon Musk would have to do at this juncture to just get rid of this poison pill problem, right? Is it as simple as he goes and files Schedule TO for a takeover offer, a formal tender offer, and takes it straight to the shareholders? Would that be enough pressure to get rid of this poison pill or possibly another one? So as a general matter, it has not been sufficient to get over a poison pill defense to just mount a tender offer. Because the moment he would launch a tender offer and acquires more than 50% of his shares, because the board hasn't clear the tender offer, right? The way the poison pill works is that the board can exempt certain bidders from the application of the poison pill, which allows them to get around it with the board's consent. And so if the board doesn't consent is the poison pill will just get triggered and can get put in place again and again and again and re-triggered each time. So essentially, if the board, so long as the board can consistently either say the price is too low or we want Twitter, Twitter to be, remain independent, Elon Musk can't really just power through this, in particular since he barely has the money to buy Twitter at his current offer price, right? Any successive efforts would, would probably require him to raise the bid. Finally, it's unclear that the current shareholders are willing to sell at this price, given that Twitter was selling at more than $70 per share less than a year ago. Another question I have is on a different thread here today. And on Friday, there was a court filing uh, that was a group of Tesla plaintiffs asking the judge, a federal judge, to issue a temporary restraining order to stop Musk from talking about these 2018 tweets. And I want to ask you if in any way this type of request could impact what he is, has going on, on the other hand, with Twitter and Twitter's board. It's a good question. Um, I mean, the, the, the gag order would only apply to the case in question, which is about taking a company private, a company being Tesla, 
Now he's trying to take another company private. So how broad, how how broadly would that gag order extend? Would it extend to using 420 in the purchase price? Probably not. Um, and it's certainly probably not something that Elon Musk would comply with anyway. He would probably push to have any sort of gag order interpreted very narrowly to the extent that we're imposed. Uh, we're, of course, talking about Elon Musk only, but there are reports that he is in conversation with other potential investors, private equity firms. Silver, like one of those names that's been brought up, and I, and I just wonder, you know, given that their co-CEO sits on the board, can they join this bid with Elon Musk? I mean, in theory, they could. The poison pill might be divided, designed in such a way that it captures multiple owners who are coordinating to take over, and it would be triggered at a 15% uh, threshold as well. Now, certainly they could coordinate and they could negotiate with the board of directors. And at some, some, at some point, the board of directors might say, OK, we have to go ahead with this, consistent with our fiduciary duties. We can't keep defending. It might also be that Twitter decides to take this to the mat and, and litigates this in, in Delaware. And then, you know, Delaware courts have proven recently to be somewhat willing to strike down poison pills deemed to be too defensive, too onerous uh, for to, to oppose a potential takeover offer. Yeah, Elon, Twitter, and the courts, the Holy Trinity, if you will. Georgetown University professor of law, Urshko Velikonia, as well as our very own Alexis Keenan. Thanks so much for that conversation.